Let us pray. Father, we thank you for this day. Thank you, Lord, as we want to hear. Bless us in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. The Lord is good. His mercies and grace are new every morning. On that point, today, I just want to talk to you about a topic. It will be, uh, we'll be exploring it more. But just to begin with, a uh, topic on grace. And what is grace? Just to go direct, grace is undeserved and earned favor that we receive from the Lord. We don't deserve it, we don't earn it, but we just receive. Receive it. Day by day we receive new grace. New grace we find day by day. The blessings of the Lord to us. Now, when we look at the scriptures, the first place and the first mention of grace that I found is in the book of Psalms 45. The first mention of grace. Because when you begin Genesis, uh, the word you'll find is this grace, this grace, this grace. But now grace, we first find it in the book of Psalms 45. So let's turn to Psalms 45 and uh, get to learn something. So Psalms 45, uh, it is entitled, uh, this is from NIV, so the title, it says, For the director of music, to the tune of Lelis, the sons of Korah, a maslik, a wedding song. Uh, other versions, like the Passion version says, uh, to the sons of Korah, who are, who are the prophets, who are prophets who, who, who wrote the songs and the psalms uh, prophetically. The sons of Korah who did it prophetically. Like when they were writing these songs, they were prophesying ahead, the sons of Korah. And now this is a wedding song and it is believed in this Psalms 45 uh, some believe that it was written. The sons of Korah uh, wrote this this uh, song uh, for Solomon uh, when he was to wed the the, the uh, woman from Ethiopia. Now, but when we read it, when you get to find time and read it all, you'll find it speaks of more than. Uh, Solomon, the greater than Solomon, Jesus Christ. It points out to Jesus Christ, but though at that time it was written to Solomon, but through the inspiration, as as uh, the Passion Version portrays it and renders it, that it was written by the sons of Korah who wrote psalms and songs prophetically. So prophetically it speaks of Jesus Christ, the sons of Korah. Now, uh, as I said, this is the first mention of grace, the undeserved and earned favor, where we find grace. Now, it, it caught me to, to again uh, just look on the one who wrote it. And the sons of Korah, who is Korah? And Korah, we find his story in the uh, Old Testament, in the time of Moses. In the book of uh, Numbers chapter 16, Numbers chapter 16, we get to find the story of Korah. Now, who was Korah? Just uh, quick. Korah was one of the servants, the Levites, who were ministering together with Moses, together with Aaron, sorry, in the tabernacle. Now, envy and jealousy rose upon them. Korah and a group and they said they wanted also to be leaders just in the position of Aaron and Moses and they rose to overthrow them and Moses was so much uh, angry with this and he spoke to the Lord and the Lord ordered Moses that these people should bring uh, their senses the, 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 uh, these were like the things used to offer to carry the incense that was to be offered before the Lord. So they were to bring it before the Lord. 
all of them and the one that could light that one is the person who God had to choose so on that day uh, it was Korah, Dathan and Abiram the three main leaders who were in opposition and they came to cut the story short on that day uh, Moses also stood and Aaron stood before the Lord and now the Lord spoke to Moses and ordered him to move away from the tents of Korah, Dathan and Abiram because the Lord wanted to bring a, a calamity upon these people and they moved away and the Lord also ordered Moses to, to, to tell the people who were around the, the place because people had gathered to see what was happening. The Lord ordered him uh, to tell these people to move away because uh, he never wanted the sins of Korah, Dathan, and Abiram uh, to catch up with the rest of the Israelites. So they moved away. And Moses said that if these men die a natural death, then I am not a servant of the Lord. But if it is unnatural, then it means I'm the servant of the Lord. And in that time, the ground opened up. And the Bible says they went to the realm of the dead alive. The ground opened up and swallowed them. Korah, Dathan, and Abiram. But the word says again in this place that uh, it swallowed. Uh, on that place, when before the ground uh, had swallowed them, there stood uh, Abiram and Dathan with their sons, their families stood there with them. But it never mentions the family of Korah. And now these people were swallowed, they went. But the family of, of uh, Korah was spared. This family of Korah now stands to serve the Lord and be in the fear of the Lord. And they understand it well that God is not pleased with sin. And he, he, he blesses those who serve him. And these people now stand with the Lord and they be creators of music now they, they they create psalms and uh, and create music in the temple of the lord now this is just to show the grace of the lord grace and deserved and unfavor god allows the sons of korah who did evil the sons of dathan and abiram were swallowed and the sons of korah also deserved this uh, going into the realm of the dead but the lord spared them that is grace the Lord allowed them. And now, these, they rise to, to write some of the Psalms, in the book of Psalms, some of the Psalms were written by them. Now, Psalms 45, where I say, as I was beginning that, at the first mention of grace, these sons of Korah wrote it. Hallelujah. This is to illustrate to you people, as I do say, servants of the Lord, the Lord is looking to work with people who are willing to understand that there are times of calamities, there are times of blessings. But even when he, he, he punishes us due to our sins, he is so good and gracious and he will spare us and show us mercy. He punishes but shows mercy. This is the goodness that we find in our Lord. So people, men of God, those who have fallen, Get up and know the Lord can still use you as he used at the sons of Korah. Again, they were greatly used in the service and in the ministry. Verse 1. My heart is stirred by a noble theme as I recite my verses for the king. My tongue is the pen of a skillful writer. Now verse 2 where we find it. You are the most excellent man. And your lips have been anointed with grace. Now, you're the most excellent man. We say uh, it is believed it was being written to Solomon. But now, uh, in prophetically, this portrays Jesus. Because when you go down reading this, you'll find it speaks of Jesus. Find time and read it. So, uh, it says you're the most excellent man. And your lips have been anointed with grace. Other versions say, and every word you speak 
is full of grace. <laughs> uh, since God has blessed you forever, the first mention of grace, you are the most excellent man and your lips have been anointed with grace. Every word you speak have been anointed by grace. Every word you speak is full of grace. This is the Lord we serve people. Jesus Christ was loved by sinners simply because he could always show grace and speak grace to the sinners and mix it with the truth. Now you see, brethren, some of us, uh, men of God, are feared by sinners or those who are still in the world because we do speak truth. But you see, truth should be mixed with grace. It should be seasoned with grace that when you speak it, the two things, it brings out love when you speak. You don't just speak truth, but you mix it with grace. It happens as if you are speaking to a friend who has wronged you, your best friend. You wouldn't speak to wrong him, but just to relay the message in a friendly manner to make him or her understand it. So it says, every word he speaks is full of grace. And this is why Jesus was loved. So brothers and sisters, we too, let us always share the truth of God, but with grace, 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 and deserved and earned favor. Let us show grace to people because God has shown us grace. And now, in the New Testament, based on this point, one day Jesus Christ, uh, people came to him and uh, realized uh, some were moving away from him. Some people were leaving. And then he asked his disciple, are you not leaving? And then uh, Peter spoke. Uh, let's just read the place. Lastly, as I'm ending, uh, in John, John chapter six, uh, verse sixty-eight. Now Simon Peter answered him, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. At this point, they were leaving, and he asked them. Are you not going? You too. You, you. Are you not leaving me? And then Peter answered, Where, where can we go? And to whom can we go? You have the words of eternal life. And I should say, Your words are, are full of the revelation of eternal life. People, Jesus Christ, when he was speaking to his disciples, and to sinners, because the word says he was a friend of sinners. His words were full of revelation, a revealing, an opening of eternal life. And that is the gospel, the good news, that through him the world is saved. And it doesn't depend, going to heaven and being saved doesn't depend upon us keeping the law, but it depends on us, on whom we believe. That is, believing in him. One day they asked him, what works should we do? But he said, uh, obey, hear the Son of Man, hear me, just believe in me, hear what I'm telling you. Jesus said that, and that is to be accounted to you as doing the complete works of God. So people, God has made it simple, it's so simple, and let us not try to... to, 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 to just try to make it look so much difficult on people who are still not yet saved people. Salvation is easy. It's easy on this context. Get me right. That we don't have, a part we only have to play is to believe. And not try to perform anything. Just believe in the Lord. And let the Lord work. It gets tough on the way that persecutions and all that come. But again, God grants us the grace to move through the storms. Again, grace and grace. So, brothers and sisters, show love, show love, mix it with grace, speak truth, share the word of God with people. It doesn't matter. Don't, don't care whether people are pleased or uh, they're against you. 
to those who are viewers, may they listen. And God bless you so much. Till we meet next on the Grace Series. Be blessed in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.